Hello and welcome to Analyzing Finance with Nick. In this video, I am going to be talking about the hip subreddit anti-work and what it means and why we should care about it. I'm going to split this series into two parts. The first part really will be an explanation of what this subreddit is, what's the movement it represents, and what are the key ideas and economic philosophies it is driven by. And then in a second video, I'm going to do my opinion on why this matters and what are the longer term socioeconomic consequences of such a movement and whether I believe it'll actually gain any traction beyond the internet. First, let's talk about the subreddit itself. Reddit anti-work is now the sixth most commented subreddit on the entire website of Reddit, and it's the number one career-related subreddit on Reddit. Uh, it has risen from less than 20,000 viewers two years ago, um, actually a little less, more two years ago, about 2019, to 1 1.6 million as I'm speaking right now with 900 of those, thousand of those in the last year. Uh, it was originally created in 2013. Uh, is mainly the idea of it is really just a critique of the practice of having to go to work and having to gain employment as a means to support oneself. They don't like to call themselves moderate reformers who just want to make working a little bit less bad and maybe move some of the share of GDP more towards labor and away from capital. They really want to abolish the idea of work entirely. And I put it best in their slogan, which is unemployment for all, not just the rich. Um, they're very critical of hustle culture. Uh, they're very critical of having to work in general and of poor working conditions and about how unskilled labor particularly is underpaid. Uh, they've also been linked to the great resignation meme that is kind of going through economic conversations. However, I honestly think that the great resignation is a little bit overblown in the sense that a lot of these people who are quitting their jobs are not just entirely opting out of the workforce. Uh, at least among the millennial and Gen Z who are the dominant participants in the Great Resonization. Most of them are just switching to better jobs or starting businesses that, as somebody who has started a business, I'll let you tell you that your hours you put in as an entrepreneur, often, especially in the early stages, often exceed what we would do working at a corporation. So I don't think the Great Resonation, a lot of the turnover in the labor market is due to anti-work which is so I will talk about the great resignation another time but for ant but the thing is I think those are falsely tied together this is more just a strike on the idea that people should have to work at all and that instead uh, either governments or society broadly should provide for these people or that automation has really hit such a point now technologically that we don't need people to do most jobs and citizens should be paid a dividend to exist. Uh, because of these types of ideas, uh, the anti-work movement is often tied to people with ideological backgrounds and anarchism, democratic socialism, and Marxism. Uh, and it's a big tent of a lot of different groups on, I would say, the further left of the political spectrum. Uh, again, these aren't moderates who just want to make working conditions slightly better. Uh, it's funny because one of the founding books was David Graeber's BS Jobs, which is something we've talked about on Analyzing Finance with Nick in our um, Iceberg series, Crazy Eights on David Graeber, as well as um, I've talked about it on podcasts I did before this channel. And it's interesting because I always I mentioned that that would have been one of the most potentially dangerous books 
out there that was kind of being underlooked at the time. And now with the rise of Reddit anti-work, it's not really so underlooked anymore because it's part of their main their basis. The fact that if you haven't read uh, BS Jobs or the original paper on Strike Magazine called On the Phenomenon of BS Jobs, it's really the idea that there's a negative correlation between the visibility of somebody's work and how much they're paid. And a lot of jobs, and especially in middle management and corporate America, are created to fill a sociocultural role and a place for educated people in society more than they actually add to productivity. The reasons why, I, if you want to, just I'll have a link in the description, my discussion on David Graeber. Uh, and so, they again, it's really this their idea is that they want to stop working. And if they have enough people to stop working, they can use that as collective power to disrupt the system. Uh, it's been pretty widespread that it's influenced some things, such as the recent Kellogg labor strike. Um, I've heard stories over the grapevine that a lot of employers are now afraid of showing up on Reddit anti-work. Uh, based on the way they've treated their employees, so maybe it will cause some better behavior in terms of just treatment on a micro level of employees among smaller businesses and large corporations. And it also has a lot of tie-ins with China's lying flat movement, which is a similar idea, um, except it's less ideologically aligned in terms of the politics of it. It's just that the costs of getting ahead by traditional society in that country are way higher than a recent college graduate can expect to make over the first 20 years or so of their career. And so as a result, they're opting out of conventional things such as marriage or buying a house or um, spending or even working and just doing enough gig work to support themselves, keep a roof on their head and feed themselves and play video games and the Chinese government has responded aggressively to these concerns. And I think that lying flat is the American version of this. Like On the macro level I talked about their various ideological bents but on the micro level they're really their solution is similar to lying flat in the sense that the goal is to minimize the amount of work over one's lifetime. Uh, you can use a combination of maybe the gig economy and or living in cheaper arrangements and just consuming less and therefore you don't really have to work anymore or you have to work a lot less than you would if you had higher expectations for consumption. The example that epitomizes this is the founder of the movement herself, uh, Doreen Ford. And what she did is that she basically worked a series of retail jobs and didn't like them and so she quit and did a dog walking business and works just enough hours to cover her costs and otherwise lives a very simple lifestyle and doesn't have to work and works a lot less hours. I mean due to technology and a more open market for certain skilled labor you could theoretically make the same amount of money and reduce your work hours if you price your your services and product in a, or in a way that allows for more efficiencies. However, what you, the thing is is that if you take this to the furthest extreme, there's a lot of longer-term structural economic concerns. And that is really what the anti-work movement's goals are. Uh, other live books in their library include Karl Marx's Wager, Wage, Labor, Gains, and Capital, Bertrand Russell's In Praise of Idleness, and Paul Lafarge, at least I'm pronouncing that correctly, The Right to Be Lazy. So, yeah, I mean, that's... I could see kind of somewhere these come coming from, especially on the lower skilled side that some jobs just aren't that enjoyable to do. But I'm going to go into my critique in the next video. I just kind of wanted to explain what they're about and why I 
think that they may be gaining a lot of momentum 